Hey everyone, Sin here. Today we're going to do some engineering and stuff. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an existing Arduino project and bring it into LabVIEW, as well as getting it to work with links. In the first half, I will show you how to get a DC motor working with the L298N DC motor driver based on an existing Arduino tutorial. And in the second half, I will show you how to turn on and off the DC motor using a relay. On screen, I have the tutorial for the L298N DC motor driver by Last Minute Engineers. So all credit goes to them for this well explained tutorial. What we're going to do is work out how the L298N works, wire up the circuit, and lastly test it with the example code provided. Then we will take what we have learned and apply it in LabVIEW to drive the L298 using links. I am not going to go into detail on the background theory as I'm assuming you already have a basic understanding of DC motor theory, PWM signals, and how a H bridge works. And if you don't, by all means, check out this tutorial as they do a good job of summarizing it for you. So in general, with any piece of electronics, the first thing you want to find is the datasheet so you can get its specification in a wiring diagram or a pinout diagram. In this tutorial, they have summarized all the key points nicely for us so we don't have to do all the digging ourselves. However, obviously in a professional setting, you'd actually want to find the OEM datasheet and check it for yourself, as online tutorials aren't always the best source, as you always need to do your own research. So if we scroll down, we see the power supply section, where we can see the L298N is powered through a three pin screw terminal. The first input starting from the left is the motor supply voltage, VCC, Next is ground, GND, and the third is 5 volts. Now this 5 volts can be an input or an output depending on the jumper settings as they have shown in the diagram. If you leave the jumper on, it is a 5 volt output supplied by the onboard 5 volt regulator, which you can use to power your Arduino for example. If you remove the jumper, you will need to provide 5 volts into the third pin. In this example, we will leave the jumper on. The next section discusses the voltage drop of the switching transistor of the H-bridge. In summary, there is an approximate 2 volt drop from the supply side to the output side. So you will need to provide a voltage 2 volts greater than your motor's voltage specification. For example, if you have a 12 volt motor, you will need to supply 14 volts to the input to get 12 volts to the motor. Following on from this, the next section is about the control pins, the most important part as these are what control the speed and direction of your motor. For rotation and direction control, each motor has two input pins, input one and input two for motor A, and input three and four for motor B. These are driven by five volt logic levels based on the truth table below. And as you can see, this truth table represents an exclusive OR gate. If both inputs are high or low, the motor is off, However, if one of the inputs is high and the other is low, the motor will turn on. Here we see if input 1 is high and input 2 is low, the motor will rotate in one direction, and if the opposite is true, the motor will rotate in the opposite direction. So we know now we will need to supply two digital output pins from the Arduino to control the motor direction. Next we have the speed control pins, one for motor A and one for motor B. By default, if you leave the jumper on, the motor will always turn on at 100% speed. Additionally, if you pull the pins low, it will turn the motor off. However, if we supply a PWM signal from the Arduino, we can control the speed of the motor by specifying a duty cycle. So now we know we need to assign a PWM enabled pin from the Arduino to control the motor speed. If we go a bit further down, we have a pinout diagram for the L298N, which summarizes what each connection does if you require further detail. Now let's go over the circuit schematic provided. Just know my circuit will deviate as follows. I'll be using one motor, a 9 volt battery as a power source, and the Arduino will be powered over USB. As later when we run the Lynx firmware, it must be connected to the PC to work with LabVIEW. OK, back to the schematic. We connect outputs 1 and 2 to the DC motor, 
Then we remove the jumper from the enable pin A and connect it to the PWM enable pin 9 of the Arduino. Next we connect the input pins 1 and 2 to the two digital output pins 8 and 7 of the Arduino. Next we supply the motor power source to VCC and ground. Make sure you connect the ground pin of the Arduino to the ground screw terminal of the L298N for a common ground. So let's wire everything up. And that's it, now you're ready to program. Last minute engineers have kindly provided a piece of example code to get your motor running using the Arduino IDE. If you want a detailed code explanation, they have also provided that further down below. But I will just summarize. We initialize all the variables here. Then we define the pin modes and default states of the output pins. Next we loop two functions with a one second delay between them. These functions are defined below. The direction control function just turns on each motor at full speed in one direction, then switches direction after two seconds. Finally, it turns the motors off. The speed control function turns on the motors in one direction, then increments a PWM signal to accelerate the motors from zero to maximum speed. Then it does the opposite and decelerates from maximum to zero. And finally, it turns the motors off. Let's upload this sketch and see if it works. This will also confirm our circuit is correct. Okay, we have confirmed the circuit is correct and that everything is working as intended. Let's bring this all into LabVIEW. I'm using LabVIEW 2020 Community Edition. So if you have a previous version, make sure to install the Lynx Toolkit through the VI Package Manager or watch my first video tutorial to see how to do that. Once you have LabVIEW launched, Let's proceed to upload the Lynx firmware. Go to Tools, Maker Hub, Lynx, Lynx Firmware Wizard. Change the device type to Arduino Uno. Then select the COM port it is connected to. Hit Next, then Next again and wait for it to upload. Once it's done, make sure you check the log by pressing View Log, as you want to make sure the Lynx firmware successfully deployed to the Arduino. You can check this by seeing if there were any sync or timeout errors in the AVRDo programmer. As you can see here, we had no problems. Next, let's select File, New VI, as this time we will be making the VI from scratch. Click on the block diagram, the window with the white background. This is where we will be putting all our links functions. Right click and locate the Maker Hub palette. Then hit the pin icon. This will always keep it on screen and then click on links. Then drag the open and close VIs to the block diagram. These functions will open and close the serial reference to the Arduino. Next select peripherals, then PWM. Drag the set duty cycle function to the block diagram. This is the function that will control the PWM duty cycle on pin 9 to control the motor speed. Next, back on the palette, hit the up button, then select digital and drag the write functions to the block diagram. This is the function that will write the digital output from the Arduino. Click on the drop down box of the digital write function and select end channels. This will allow us to write to more than one channel by using an array of Boolean values. As in this case, we need to write to two channels, channels seven and eight. Next, right click the block diagram and select structures, then select while loop and drag it over the set duty cycle and digital write function. And now we have essentially completed the foundation for our VI. All there is left to do is wire everything up and create the constants and controls. Just remember to do this, you need to right click on the terminal and then choose constant control or indicator. In the case of the digital write function, Right click on the channel terminal and choose constant. It automatically generates and wires an array of integers for the channels. 
Now let's get started. Alright, I have finished the block diagram on the left and the front panel on the right. If we examine the block diagram starting from the left, we open a serial connection to the Arduino on the COM port specified by our control. We also wire in an error cluster constant to initialize the error cluster. We then pass in the links resource reference, an error reference to the while loop, and to all corresponding functions. This is of course to maintain flow control. Note I put the duty cycle function before the digital write function because I always want the speed of the motor to be changed first before changing its direction. For the set duty cycle function, I have wired in an integer constant to specify pin 9 of the Arduino. I have also wired a horizontal slide control to adjust the duty cycle from 0 to 1. Next for the digital write function, we feed in an array of integers. This allows us to select multiple pins on the Arduino at once. And I have also wired a boolean array control, as you can see on the front panel, to allow us to drive pins 7 and 8 high to control the motor direction. The default state is both pins are pulled high, as if you remember in the truth table, this will result in the motor being turned off. This is also true for the inverse. You can of course do some clever logic here to drive the motor direction automatically instead of doing it click by click. However, for the sake of this video, I will leave it as a manual control. Next, we wire the stop control button to the loop condition. Make sure you do this, otherwise LabVIEW won't be happy with you. And finally, we close out the links reference to the Arduino once we exit the while loop, and let the simple error handler VI handle any errors that occur. It's as easy as that. We can now control the speed and direction of a DC motor using the L298N in LabVIEW. Now let's watch it in action before we move on to the relay. Now this video is long enough, so the relay section will be short, as the circuit is simple and the LAVI code we already made can be reused. Relays are electromechanical switches that are useful for driving higher power circuits from lower powered ones. For example, if I have a 24 volt motor circuit and I want to turn it on and off with an Arduino, I would use a relay. As the Arduino is not capable of driving 24 volts directly, as its digital output pins are limited to 5 volts. So here is a circuit schematic, and as you can see, it is pretty straightforward. We are powering the Arduino over USB, as we did before, and taking its 5 volt output and ground and wiring it directly to the VCC and ground inputs of the relay. We then connect digital pin 12 of the Arduino to the digital input line of the relay. Now, with this relay, it has three output terminals. Normally closed, NC, common, and normally open, NO. 
Normally closed means that the default state of the circuit is closed. So when you provide power to it via the relay, it will turn on. Then when you trigger the relay, it will disconnect your circuit. Normally open is the opposite of this. The default state of your circuit will be open. So when you provide power via the relay, the circuit remains open circuited until you trigger the relay, which will then complete the circuit. And of course, common is the common terminal between each output. That is, it is connected to both normally open and normally closed terminals. In our circuit, we will be using the normally open connection and common, as I want the motor to be off until we drive the relay with the Arduino. So getting back to the circuit, we connect the positive rail of the 9 volt source to the common terminal of the relay and the negative rail of the 9 volt source to one side of the motor. We then connect the remaining side of the motor to the normally open terminal. And that's it for our circuit. Let's quickly wire it up and then test it with our code in LabVIEW. Okay, now that you have wired everything up, launch the LabVIEW code we made earlier and change one of the digital output pins to pin 12. And as you can see on screen, we are able to successfully turn on and off the DC motor using the relay. Notice that when the output is low, the motor is turned off, as we expected, in the normal open state. If your motor turns on, you have wired it the wrong way around. You should also hear your relay click on and off and see the LED illuminate when you drive it from the Arduino. I hope you learned something today, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. Bye for now.